Shalom, family. Thank you so much for joining us for our Yum Rishon discussion. And I am so thankful to see all of you who are here with us uh, on this broadcast. And uh, of course, we are in the midst of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It is uh, a blessing to be coming around the corner, right? So we're coming around that... Uh, that moment when uh, you know that the end of the feast is near but we can't let go now because tomorrow is the day that uh, on the same correspondence uh, that we saw um, uh, the the children of Yashadel were pinned against the sea of reeds and that's our day of great great breakthrough and so don't be afraid of what's coming instead rejoice for your deliverance, your redemption draws nigh. Amen and amen. And again, thank you to all of you who are out there. I pray you can hear me. I assume I've got a five by five. And our brother Jerael Toma was unfortunately not feeling well today. So please keep him in prayer as, um, you know, we need to always bless one another in prayer. And thank Elohim for each person. And remember that each day is a gift. And we must cherish that gift. And speaking of gifts, well, we've got a special one tonight. A gift to our house and certainly somebody that I am truly grateful for all the time. And so we get to welcome a special guest tonight. Octavia Martinez, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I feel like I need to sit and listen to this conversation. I feel like we're up against the sea of reeds. There's a lot going well, on. Well, that's all right, man. We need to, you know, focus on Elohim and uh, know Amen. that the uh, the Egyptians you see today, you will not see anymore. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting for that day, man. Well, there's a lot going on in the earth, and a lot of people are feeling the sense of distress, aren't they? They really are struggling with yes. what's happening all around them. I mean, I I would imagine, yes, because we're struggling to just be here walking through it. I was just talking to Tony this evening. I said, I don't remember my parents ever seeming stressed that it seemed so hard to be an adult. But it feels so impossible. Yes, I don't even know was... how else to say that. Does anybody else <laughs> feel like it's literally impossible to be a grown up? I mean, they're, <laughs> we're not in their institutions, in their schools. So, you know, as a child, my parents could send us to school and there was babysitters right. and we were around relatives and there was all these communities. And it just isn't that. It's just, I don't remember. I don't think it's ever been this hard in life to be an adult except because <laughs> we're at the end everybody's like we're the, we need people we need grown-ups i can't we're the adults, adults. we need right. adults oh wait we are the adults oh no we're all in trouble if we're the right so I know. <laughs> well i i was uh i was talking with her earlier and uh, that's exactly what she said she said wait a minute i i want to raise my hand and call in an adult can i tag someone in here right. you know <laughs> can somebody tag in so you know we can deal with some of these things and yeah. you had a real challenge today you had a uh, uh your your animal your cow was was in distress and you had to find the answer and elohim had to lead you didn't he and we're, and we're still, I'm still looking at her. She, uh, she's, she got bloated, and you know these things happen on a dime. And just trying to find the answer, and anybody who's had wisdom, and Tony's like holding her head down, it's like wrestling a bear, and I'm like putting this drench down her mouth to like get this stuff in. And oh my. you know, we're still not out of the woods yet. I'm still keeping an eye on her to see how she's doing. If we gotta go do another drench tonight, I don't know. I feel like we're way out of our league. This is way above our pay grade. 
we are the least qualified people to be trying to do this. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> And that's the way it is. It, I think, I think, uh, I think everybody can relate to that feeling. I think that's one of the the. I was as I was listening to you talk to me today, I was like, yeah, everybody's battling that uh, overwhelmed feeling. Intimidating. Yes. And we need one another to get counsel. I know you reached out to several people. One of them was brethren who themselves right. grow uh, animals, and uh, and so they were able to give you some insight. And uh, but but it goes to show you how much we need one another. Amen. Yes, a hundred percent. I don't know how people do this without others. I mean, it it, it, it feels like we are, but I don't. How do people want to do? Why would people want to do this alone? This this is more work for like this is this is too much for like one person. Like this is why solo right. lone ranger ship doesn't work. No, it, it just, it's no. impossible. It can't. One of the comments that I made in our conversation that bears repeating was that um, now that I've had the uh, experience of living with and abiding with continuously with our brethren, there's no comparison. And now I look at the things that we have to accomplish and just day to day stuff and I don't know how regular people function without all that help because I mean, we've got people together and when they're together, there's problems get solved a lot easier. Uh, and so we're, we're grateful for that, but then it makes you go, well, how, wait a minute, how are people getting this done? Which just, you know, how about single parents out there? Shout right. out to every one of you that are, that are, Oh my goodness. I mean, I don't even want to begin to think about the battles that, I mean, we're talking right. about with, with you and your husband dealing with stuff, right. imagine being alone. So yeah, this is not the time to be a lone ranger going it alone, striking out on your own. No. We all need a sense of independence, but, um, but we also have to learn about that interdependence. Not and this much independence. This is too much. Little she's like, I'm tagging out of this independence. I need teammates and I need brethren. So yes. may Elohim continue to bring you um, uh, people to connect with. And I know that some of you out there are single parents who are doing a Herculean effort. I was raised by a single mom. I know what that is. Uh, entails, and I can't imagine it in today's world with the battles that you have. You have our extreme respect in this moment, and we encourage you uh, to find connecting points because you're going to need them, aren't you? Yes. I mean, I, I, I joke about this often, but I, I have a very large family, my extended family. I have uh, several aunts who've had, you know, upwards of eight, nine, ten you know, six to 10 children. And I wonder how, how did they do this? <laughs> I don't I'm know telling you right now. are doing this. I don't. And, you know, we have a unique situation here, folks. So here at New Kingdom, we don't all live in one dwelling. Right. Um, everyone here has separate dwellings. And as a matter of fact, we're trying to expand that. So uh, we certainly can use your help out there for those, uh, especially those that are not able to to afford it um, on right. their own. So we need a little help from mm -hmm. from the community. But but, you know, everybody has enough of their independence that they can keep maintaining that their privacy and what have you. But we do things together. Right. So all the battles we face, we face them together. We eat together. We break bread together when it's not unleavened bread. We break we break um, unleavened bread together this week, but, um, but, you know, I was just thinking about that before we went on the air, uh, we did rehome all the puppies. Yay! Yes. They got all rehomed. And, um, for those of you that don't know, our, our, our dogs had puppies and there were 10 of them wow. and that's way more than you normally get for a first litter. So we got dumped in the deep end of the pool. Hello. We know a little like something about that. End. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, mama was like, I don't know what's going on. I said, don't worry. Elohim will make a way. And sure enough, today she took uh, both Josie and Chase with and they made sure they got rid of all the rest of the puppies and uh, and did really well, actually. So didn't uh -huh. have to do much discounting. And 
right. and was able to get good numbers for each one. And, and we're thankful for that. And so, but again, a team effort, a team effort. So, you know, um, that is the thing that he's confirming. Yeah. I still have, I still have I one. Still here. We have two of them we kept. So out of the 10, we, we rehomed eight of them. And uh, we have Honey Girl and we have Pandemonium. <laughs> Otherwise, it's short as Panda, but I, I don't know. I think he's Pandemonium. I don't know. It feels like Pandemonium, way. especially today. And I don't know how people do this without you, Hua. I, I, I was talking to someone um, <clears throat> today, just probably less than an hour ago, and I told her I literally had to go in the prayer closet this afternoon just because of feeling so overwhelmed and so intimidated by everything that's going on. I just had to step away and just ask you who like, can you please help us with wisdom? Like we can, I can't do anything without him. We can't do any of this without him. And you know, that's my right. husband and I are just sitting here. Like I can't describe or articulate enough just the level of intimidation that we feel. I don't know how people are doing this without him because I feel more intimidated each day. And I know it's easy. People think, oh, because you're on YouTube and <clears throat> a lot of people might know who you are. Like, you're good. That doesn't make your life easier. No. That may make it harder. I don't <laughs> feel like I feel so unqualified, so right. out of my lane, just right. like what is happening? <laughs> That's yep. the feeling, especially today. Like, what? Yeah. Well, it's easy to feel that way. And if you're out there and you're feeling a little overwhelmed, let this be an encouragement to you. Even even those that are, um, you know, you might think, oh, you guys have got it made. No, listen, no. it's a battle for everybody. Oh, right. And we all have to work together. And that's the beautiful thing that we get to enjoy when we do combine effort. Um, we see the benefit of that. And then you go, why isn't everybody doing that? Why are we trying to maintain separate when together is easier? It's so much I mean, easier. if you're looking for the easier road, the easier road is be together with your brethren. Right. Things get easier. Your car breaks down. So somebody else will drive you where you need to go and your car goes to the shop. And it's a lot easier to battle that. You got to go somewhere. There's other people that can cover for things. I mean, like I said, even a married couple has their challenges. You start adding in, you know, animal husbandry and farming and making it's things this is, <laughs> this is the yeah, really this is why we ended up giving away so many of these jobs uh because people were like look man this is a lot of work okay uh and we understand but again all the more reason why we need to be uh united in one accord find your fold and if there's ever a time that you better make that a priority boy now is the time it's to make it's, that a priority it's getting so real. And, you know, somebody else is messaging me today about something else. And she said, essentially, this is not a movie. This is real life. And it's basically, it's a horror film. You know, the things that we're seeing and the number of people who are um, suddenly no longer are there and they're not very old and it's hitting real lives and real families in real time. This is so not a joke. It's so not a game. You know, no, we're it's not very immune, serious. We're not immune from seeing that in our own relatives. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, they seem okay. And then there's like emergencies. And it's, this is so, this is a terrifying time. Like now we see the scriptures where he says, why are people standing as if they're like loins? Like they're like, these men look like they're in labor. Like this is how it feels looking upon the right. earth. This is no joke. It is no joke. And I think that uh, unfortunately for our brethren, um, we need to encourage you again because it is about to get tougher. Right. Uh, we are crossing a line here. Uh, and as we get into this time period and really look at what Elohim is doing, uh, it is you want to talk about intimidating. This is where we're headed is intimidating. And it was it was it was it was intense from Passover last year to Sukkot of last year. I thought. The dial was turned up then. Yeah. I don't even want to know yeah. what is going to happen between now and Sukkot because yeah. it feels like it is on and popping, okay? Yeah, it is popping on some steroids, I'm telling yes. you right now. 
And uh, unfortunately, uh, Saints, uh, you know, we have fallen for some thinking processes that were meant to divide us and conquer us. Uh, we fell for the, you know, sort of okie doke where, hey, you know, um, everybody needs to be independent. And that's not how this nation was formed. That's not how the tribes operated. That's not how anything successful does. That's a way for them to divide and conquer and control you. Exactly. When you don't have the power of cohesion, when there's no unity, think about groups that lobby, for example, what do they always have to do? Well, they got to form an association. They got to form some kind of group. Why? So that they can speak with one voice. When they've got you individualized, it's much easier for them to uh, for the world, if you will, to control you, to traumatize you. And that's another thing that we need to talk about tonight, because we're going to be talking tonight about deliverance and him delivering you. And there again, there's a, a matter that needs to be uh, done correctly, because um, you got to have your brethren, because each man is going to bear his own burden in this hour. So, uh, this is why it is so critical not to be checking out. I know that there's, what, 50% of the population is on some type of alcohol or drug or, you know, something. They're checking out every day. Or Man, some of the people. Themselves with mind yep. Not mind-numbing things that don't matter. Some of the people you guys are arguing with on social media are drunk. <laughs> they're not even real people. <laughs> no, they're drunk. They're just drunk. They started yeah. drinking when they got home, and by the or time box, they're literally over, like, man, they're drunk. they're lit, you know. Yeah. And you're you're talking to them, and you're trying to talk sense to them, and they're drunk, but you don't know because they're just texting, right? And they're just responding in text, and you have Correct. no idea, or they're under some other drug, or or under a spirit, um, under the control of a spirit. And this is why, when you're debating with them, they keep coming back with answer after answer. Course, and they don't seem thing. to tire out either. And this is why I tell people I prefer nope. I prefer offline relationships. I prefer yes. phone calls. Um, I just think that makes things uh, more streamlined and easier. And you know what you're dealing with you, because, you know, people send text messaging and things can get read into that. People, I think, would, they practice less filtering on text message. But I think yes. when people come um, through face-to-face or some yep. sort of phone call, they learn how to come more appropriately and correctly. Yep. So I prefer that. Because my, fr well my friends on Facebook get trained. I train them. I let them know. You send me links or comments without saying hello, without saying shalom. That's a good way to be unfriended. I right. don't have time. Right. Okay. You, that doesn't prevent you from looking at a broadcast or what have you. But if you don't have the time to say hello, then you're going to have the time to say it's time to go. Ah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. that is one of the rudenesses that I believe wears people out. Yes. You know, you're start. Have you ever had somebody call you up and they're talking as if you were already in a conversation and they, go, the they start, they start at three quarters. You feel like you're, you're three quarters into a football game and you're down 21 to nothing. And you didn't even know what happened in the first half. Yes. I've had to tell people. Um, so you kind of started in the middle. Can you? Yeah. Can you yeah. How about with hello? Shalom yeah. to your house. Okay. Luke chapter right. 10. You don't walk in that way. You walk right. in with Shalom. Right. And then if you start to sense that they want to debate, there's a difference between, yes, my brother just nailed it. Look, at we're on the same Ruach. If there's people that come to you with a question who are humble and sincere, and they say, hey, can you tell me what you do? Like somebody asked a question about unleavened bread, and they were mm -hmm. honest and sincere, and yeah, it was a sincere that, right? question, and it was not offensive. And I'm like, absolutely, I'll answer as best I know how. But there's other questions that are more like the Pharisees, where they're yeah. like, so... What I've this? got a question for you. What about this? What do I look like this? to you? Yep. You know, and and so I think that there's an entitlement that. Or I don't know if I agree, and they want you to explain to them, and they put the work on you, and then suck your time. Okay, well, don't agree. Don't come over here, though. So here's what I say to them, and here's what I would encourage you all to be wise about this, because again, it is Yahuwah that delivers us. Okay, it's not. Our brethren, although our brethren are important and we work together and he may speak through one another. 
but every man must bear his own burden. And one of the deceits of the last days and one of the reasons why they're going to become very angry with you and even hate you and want to get rid of you and destroy you even if they could is because the foolish versions have made presumption that they are entitled to the oil of the wise. Right. Okay. And they are not entitled to the oil of the wise. And one of the passages that comes to mind um, is in Ezekiel. And he says something here in Ezekiel. Let me put it on the screen. I just happened to have it. Let's take a look. Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out mine hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send what? Famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. And though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls wow. by their zedakah, their righteousness, saith Yahuwah Elohim. So this isn't just, this isn't my opinion or Octavia's opinion. This is the declaration of El Shaddai, Almighty Elohim, who has said, I'm letting you know that when I bring this kind of judgments upon the land, don't be thinking that you can ride somebody else's coattail. Okay? Everybody's got to pick up their bucket. Everyone's got to put their shoulder to the to the to the work. And this is why he puts people out in front, like you guys, so you can see how difficult it is. And then you go, okay, I can do this on my own, or I can partner with others that are already doing this and come alongside. And then we'll have the burden and then we'll have it again and have it again with each new shoulder that comes along. Right. That is how we bear our burden with our brethren. I mean, make no mistake about it. We have got to understand that we're we're going into these days, aren't we, sister? We are. It just reminds me of a conversation my husband and I were having today at dinner. I'm like, OK. Who's got an RV and wants to park it on our property? Anybody? We need somebody. Anybody? Who's coming? I mean, I don't yeah. know if it's just in the atmosphere, you know, because I've talked to a few people today, but I'm not mm. the only one feeling this heaviness. I don't right. know if it's because we're in the midst of a feast. Everything feels just like it's on fire. I feel like we're going through a fiery time of testing. It, it just feels so heavy and the pressure, it just feels like, you know, we're bearing down. It, I can't describe it or articulate it. <laughs> well, it, 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 um, so yesterday during Shabbat, um, I was watching you, actually. Uh, I was sitting here resting and just enjoying the chatter and the conversation. And I was impressed to go look at... Um, Genesis 4 8, because 4 8 kept saying, everybody keeps saying 4 8, 4 8, 4 8. Mm -hmm. And we even noticed some things about 4 8. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Well, you know, I'm going to look at Genesis 4 8. And as soon as I did, he began to speak to me. Mm -hmm. And so I went through every book all the way to Revelation. And not only did I grab the verse, but then he spoke and he kept speaking. Each verse he interpreted for me in real time for our current situation. For those that would like to read what he gave me, you can go over to our discussion board. I posted and pinned it to the top. So it'd be real easy to find. And our discussion board is right off of remnanthouse.org. So he says, cast not your pearls before swine. So I don't like to put things like that out in the public right. unless he tells me to. This is instruction for you, the remnant that he is revealing in this time. And there was a message in every one of those verses. Oh, man. It was and intense. it was intense. And what he is saying is clear. He is not playing. This is not man. This is not my idea. This was by his Ruach. He's like, let me tell you where you're going, what the door is that you're about to go through. And we're about to see the opposite of unity. We're going to see brother against yeah. brother. If you look up Genesis 4, 8, you'll see where this starts off and it doesn't get better. It gets harsh, but he will preserve 
his remnant through this time. And so this is why we need to talk about deliverance. And this, yeah. this word just came out. This, this uh, uh, message was, or discussion rather, um, uh, we were going to, I was going to have this conversation with brother Jerael and please keep him in prayer because he called me or texted me earlier and, and wasn't feeling well. And, um, uh, you know, he's here talk about an example of somebody that's by himself. And he, he says to me, I don't take as good a care of myself as I should. And there's another one that I'd like to have here. In fact, we have a fundraiser going on right now. If you want to help out, go on over to remnanthouse.org and give for emergency housing because he's one of those that I've got in heart to uh, provide a, a place of refuge for him and give him some safety, if you will, because I feel of concern for my brethren who are scattered out there. If I, if it were up to me, you remember that movie 2012? You guys remember that? Okay. And the guy goes over to the, the house of his uh, family and says, get in the car. And they're arguing with him. Oh, the governor said it's going to be fine. And he goes, when they tell you it's going to be fine, that's when you need to run. And they all get in a limousine and barely make it out. That's how I feel right now. Yes. If I could, I would yell at all of y'all and say, get, the get in the car. Yes. Okay. Get in the car now. Okay. We'll talk <laughs> right. about this later. You know, no dilly dallying. No dilly dallying. Exactly. But, yeah. you know, obviously you're all grown ups. So you got to do your own thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, that's how we feel. It can feel the intensity coming. And it's not just because of an eclipse, right. or rockets or CERN, or any other news that you may have heard concerning this time. This has got to do with the word of Yahuwah. We can feel it. We can feel it in the Ruach. And I haven't even been paying attention to CERN or any of that stuff. It's weird that the world is so focused on, you know, right. the of the heaven. Well, they got to have something. But you can feel the weight of, it feels like yeah. there's a train coming down the track that no one can see. And it's it's about to get real up in here. Okay, <laughs> that's the best way. Yeah, I, I I do believe that the word we got was accurate. I believe that mm -hmm. uh, I I was trembling with it. Mama went out to the altar to pray, and Elohim began to speak to her even more. Um, so we got more confirmation of that word, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm just saying, you know, this is not a time to take it lightly. And and many of you are saying you feel it, right? And as you feel his approaching, what are they talking about? Get underground. Everybody get underground. Everybody go to ground. I'm looking at them like they're crazy. Like a mountain's going to protect you from him right. who sits upon the throne. You better be they praying. The rocks are... to fall on us and hide us from the wrath of the land. This is literally Come what on. they're doing. It's been prophesied. Exactly as prophesied. Mm -hmm. Like. Did you guys, are you guys just following the script or are you just yeah. unaware that you're fulfilling unaware. the scripture and running to gold and silver, just yeah. as he said they would. Yeah. Right. Now gold her. is hitting gold hit new highs, right? People are putting their trust in the gold and the silver, just exactly as he said. And he said, it is cankered. It will be a witness against you right. in the last days. Right. It will bear witness against you, not for you, right. against you. And how many of them are going, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put it in the ground. You've got that aching spirit. I'm going to put it in the ground. Nobody's going to know. Wow. You know what happened to him? He got stoned and burned. His whole family, not just him. That's right. It everything cost his whole unto him. His family. Children, his wife, everything, animals, everything he had gone. Here we go, folks. Open book test. The question is, did you open the book? OK. Uh -oh. And, you know, somebody just said, what's gold going to do? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because if you needed, you know, you needed an omelet and, and some some hash browns and some and some breakfast, gold ain't going to get it here. OK, you needed to have gold tried by fire. You needed to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Anybody seeking to save his own life, what happens? You lose it. Messiah did not mince words. A lot of times people ascribe to him almost like a generality. No, he was very specific. As a matter of fact, so this is for those out there that are like, wow, you know, he can deliver me anywhere. 
Yeah. And I bet you there were some people at about 69 AD when the saints were leaving Jerusalem that were saying the same thing. I bet you there were. I bet you there were people like, oh, we don't got to go nowhere. We don't got to go to no wilderness. We don't got to go out into no faraway place. Just like Listen, Zedekiah. This is Jerusalem. Babylon, he wanted to stay in Jerusalem. And he kept, they kept saying, if you stay here, these are, people are going to overtake you. Right. And what happened? Over millions of people were raped, killed. M horrific things Josephus records for uh, that that time. And where were the Nazarim? Well, you remember that Ananias and Sapphira episode? Remember that? And the reason why he taught them to sit over the treasury so they could discern who they should allow into the community right. and who they shouldn't. Okay. Right. They liquidated yeah, so. and then didn't give unto Elohim. So he's like, get rid of your stuff here, get together and get away from here. That's why the Nazarene endured, because they listened to Messiah when he said, flee, right? Don't be here. When you see Yerushalayim um, encompassed with armies, it's time to go. It's not time to go. Oh, it's time. I'm going to get whisked away. <laughs> no, they didn't get raptured. They got ruptured. I, I and I believe that doctrine for an embarrassingly long time, but no, nope. right? You don't want okay. to get taken. He keeps your foot from being taken. He says. The now they're is. talking about everybody either go underground or stare at the eclipse, one or the other. I don't think either one is a good idea. No. Um, and so, saints, understand that we are in extremely perilous days. No. You don't even know where the perils are coming from. We seem to be catching on. It's like we're catching on to the scams and the and the cons after they've already run them. Yeah, they're already out there, and then we're like, "Hey, did you see what they?" And we're catching them because our eyes are open. But how many people are going straight in to judgment and all getting kinds of getting funneled things? away down? Did I not talk about this yesterday? Getting funneled down the pathway like their neighbors, they're getting put down a hallway. And so, right. if, if you're living the same life. As everyone around you who's not not Sarim, how are you not going to get funneled and pushed down the same hallway? You got Where these Judas there? goats. You got these Judas goats. And those of you that know what a Judas goat is, they got Judas goats that are out in force. And they're telling you, oh, no, don't follow those crazy. They're a cult. Uh, those are cult leaders. And those are cults, those sacred namers. And, and, um, Hebrew roots cult I heard today and I'm like wow yeah, wow isn't that something right mm -hmm. so because they are they are doubling down and this is where the hate's going to come in brethren because as they realize as more occurs mm -hmm. what is he going to do he's going to bless his people the few and the many are going to be angry about that and they're going to be because cursed. remember that they were competitive to begin with. Right. So while there are some that are cooperative and trying to just connect with their brethren, there's other people that are like, no, this is mine. No, get away. And it's all competitive. This is not of Elohim. It's not. Okay. Can you imagine if the 12 tribes coming out of Egypt were all competing with each other? What we saw. Directions. We saw what happened to those that did compete with, with Moshe and compete with what Elohim was doing. He opened the ground and swallowed them. Them up. Right. Okay. Another 250, he just sent fire down and just took care of them, said, y'all need to be quiet now. Like all of a sudden, they were just gone. Only not a good kind of gone. Right. They were consumed by the fire. <laughs> right. they, didn't, they didn't endure. They didn't remain. And so, and it's going to continue to get more and more challenging as we go because the prophecies tell us that, and, and we got more confirmation and just heard it again, where he's going to bring famine. What he showed us yesterday, and again, go to the discussion board, you can read the whole thing. He showed us that he's going to bring them to a point of famine, of emaciation, that man would wish for death. They okay. will wish for death. Okay? Right. So this is where people are staying. They're staying in a place where people are about to be wishing for their own demise. They're so weak. 
They are incapable of thinking beyond, and they don't even know. One of the other things he said was they won't know where to point their adoration. They won't even know how to resolve the matter. They took so lightly the things of the kingdom that they don't even know where the repentance needs to even start. So they're going to start repenting is, to the to the Nazarene. That's prophesied too, that they're going to literally be bowing themselves at the feet of the Kodashim. And mm -hmm. that's not the right place either. Well, and one of the things that he, he showed me is that there are some who, who have mocked and scoffed and said some very wicked things. Um, and I don't know for popularity's sake or because they don't want to repent for being a tattoo parlor. I don't know what it is, but um, the fact of the matter is they will repent publicly and many of them will not survive because their own congregations, their own groups, their own big numbers will come for them. So, you know, we're about to watch the recompense of the wicked and that's what he prophesied we would see. Right. And so this is why it is critically important that you don't take these these kadosh things lightly uh, as we are encountering them, because this is where your deliverance is. And speaking of deliverance, so in 29 years, I've seen a lot. And one of the things that earmarked the beginning of my ministry was um, casting out demons and dealing with spirits and things. But one of the problems, and my brother David is on the on the chat here so he can tell you goes back a long way as several of you do with us and one of the problems that we continued to see which we were very perplexed by was the um shalom from san diego chile uh was mm -hmm. the relapse rate okay mm -hmm. and if you ask any of the ministries and ministers about that they don't have good answers for it um they'll try to pretend it away but if you just pay attention OK, I'm just telling you from a pastoral standpoint. All right. There's my primo hermano right there. If you pay attention, you saw them continuously coming back for prayer on the same things over and over. And yes. I'm not just talking about over a couple of days or something. No, we're months talking and years. Yes. months and years of the same exact relapsing. And many of you have seen you know, even in a short time walking with him, you'll see those that keep relapsing versus those that steady on. Doesn't mean their life is not difficult because whenever you get a word, remember, it's got to pass through the three tests. So that looks bad, but you're going on your way to 30, 60 and 100 fold. Right. So there's an end there. There's no this other side is an endless loop. It is a constant and endless loop. And so this was very frustrating for uh, for me, especially as, you know, if you have a heart to see people get delivered, to get set free, the last thing you want is you want them to relapse. So when we say deliver or deliverance, this should be permanent, okay? Or at least, uh, you know, yeah, the, the, the righteous man falls seven times, but he gets back up. So you should be seeing them recover. Even if they relapse, they should recover and get back on their feet. When instead, what you're seeing is them fall down and, man, they don't even, you don't even see them come back for six months or a year or they're disappearing on you. This is telling you that there's some, there's some significant things that are incorrect. Right. Right. And that is what we are constantly on the hunt for is where is this relapse coming from? Right. And so we did a series called um, Uncovering Demonic Doorways. And in that series, we uncovered several things that were causing these relapses. And so I strongly encourage those of you that are aware of our channel on YouTube to um, to check out that series on your, your time off. And Things we um, wouldn't even think would open doorways. Right. right. Like how you manage time. Mm -hmm. You didn't realize that that was a big one, but it is. Mm -hmm. Time is their massive uh, witchcraft um, trick. Mm -hmm. And so how that's done is, is, is opens a demonic doorway. And those that are, you know, evangelistic, who want to see people get saved and set mm -hmm. free, well, they are people that are interested in that recovery and overcoming. So what does it mean to be an overcomer? It means that battle 
is over, doesn't it, sister? Amen. And and that's that is the key is we have to remain, we have to endure. He that endureth unto the end. That it's like a a future. You know, it's it's, it's right. present, but it's also future tense. You know, that's this right. is this is a continual every day. You need to get your cup filled walk. And I found that typically when people are relapsing, usually I have been able to see like two big things. It's either some sort of doctrine that's error. Compromise. Or there is secret sin or unconfessed sin. Usually also those, compromise. And that's usually tied into idolatry of some sort, whether they're worshiping a person, a relationship, mammon, etc. There's idolatry or sin or bad doctrine generally correct For, correct and so results don't lie right. um results are what he meant when he said wisdom is justified in her children yes. you will know something is wise by its fruit how does it manifest if the person is continuing in a loop right. um I, we were talking about people that were being treated by a certain type of treatment and it's only got a three percent success rate that's stupid Right. Plain and simple. Okay. If something only has a 3% success rate, that's the 3% that we're able to endure that cruelty. That's all that says. Right. 97% uh, died because they were supposed to die. That was a deadly thing to do. And so we've got to stop repeating patterns that don't produce the right result. Right. And uh, if you're interested in deliverance, right, and you look at things like some things that David said, um, you know that he was very specific. Now, David did not have something that you have foisted upon you. He didn't have the lying pens of the scribes preventing him from knowing the name of Yahuwah. It hadn't been done yet. That was a later little scammeroo that they pulled on you all so you wouldn't have power in the day that they wanted to destroy all things and bring you into worship of the devil. And David in 2 Samuel, it says, And David spake unto Yahuwah the words of this song in the day that Yahuwah had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, Yahuwah is my rock. Who? Yahuwah. Okay. So all the people out there that are anti his name, well, how in the world do you even look at some of these verses? If you say He's that, Al, no wonder you're, re you're not recovering because you're right. disrespecting him. He revealed his name, okay? And Yahuwah is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. What if you call him the wrong deity? What if you call in a fake deity to be your deliverer? Well, violating his you, command. When you call a fake, you get fake, right? Okay. And the reason why is because. Worshiping the devil is cheaper and easier than worshiping Elohim. He's going to ask you hard questions. He's going to put you through a narrow road where the other road is broad and wide. The it's Elohim of my yes. rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from what? Violence. Violence. This is not just physical violence. This is also those who would violate his word. Who did, what did they say? The pen of the, how does it put it? Um, the pen of the scribes did violence to his Torah. Yes. And what he showed me is that the brother rising up against the brother is the demonic attempt to seize the kingdom. Right. Just just as he said in the parable, remember that parable where he says they thought in their grand genius thinking that if they kill the heir, they right. get the they get to right. keep their vineyard. Make any wisdom. Right. Where in, in any place on earth has it ever been lawful for you to commit murder and inherit the, the, the victim's things? Right. Except even a life you know, insurance policy will get canceled if somebody murders the uh, person. And tries to collect, okay? Right. So this is logic that doesn't make any wisdom, any sense, any blessing. And so you're sitting there realizing that you're dealing with abject crazy out there. Like I said, most of them are medicated, but but even the ones that aren't, 
uh, have been so convinced in their idolatry mm -hmm. that they are okay that they don't even know where to look for their deliverance. Isn't that right, sister? That's true. And, you know, it, speaking of violence, you got the other side and say they take the kingdom. The righteous take the kingdom. What is the scripture? They take the uh, well, it says uh, uh, the kingdom of Elohim suffereth violence, suffer violence and the violent right. take it by force. force. Right. But it kind of reminds me of those who, there was, a, is it Ezekiel 34, where he talks about those who claim to be the seed of Abraham, the imposters in the land. There are people who, even in the Torah, I call them Torah non-observant um, community, yeah. who, you know, they profess to be the ones that, no, we're the, really the remnant, but their doctrine is so beyond skewed. The results but, are everything. Right. The results so are there's everything. just chaos and disorder. And Enoch right. got it right, obviously, when he received the prophecy that this, the final generation is the worst of all that have ever lived. And it's because the slog of deception that went, that we were born into that predated yes. us by centuries, that it is literally a miracle to even have an ounce of the truth in today's time. That is so because true. In fact, I'm, I'm grateful that you brought that up, brother David. That's a good point. Thank you for that uh, piece of wisdom. Most of them are in fact reprobate. Right. And one of the fruit of the reprobate mind is debate. Yes. So when people want to debate you, how many people have you ever seen get saved because they were debated into it? Zero, goose egg. I can tell you over 29 years. So I've never seen it. Not you one time. You can't argue anyone into this. It does not, not work. As soon as they have that spirit on them, as soon as you see that turn and rend you thing, close it up. Bye. Wrap it up. Bye. Okay. No, I'm yeah. not going to argue with you right. because that is what they're after. And they're coming for you. And this is how blood gets heated up. This is how Cain ginned up his, his anger till he killed his brother because he was debating. He had been given over already to a reprobate mind. And he'll and so go he through. He's killed the, his brother. The adversary will go through people that we know and love, relatives. Yes. And, and so some people don't even recognize the debate spirit is there because the person will come to them and it'll seem, you know, nice enough or innocent enough so you'll respond and then they'll send something back and then you could tell oh, this is this could go one of two ways and if it's like that it's like no nah. you know and, and that a good example is you know this this two weekends ago was that pagan hell a day and people texting about that and i told someone oh you know we don't celebrate that that's celebrating these uh fake deity you know who and then she comes back hours later. Yeah, but the church took all those holidays. So they're okay now. I'm like, Ugh. so even though I really love this person, I think she's wonderful. That that was a debate spirit that was beginning to manifest because it right. justified, even though it knew the truth, it was justifying and doubling down into why that was okay. So a debate spirit's not always going to uh, present itself as adversarial. That's right. Sometimes it starts off even right. nice. But here's something that I will give you as a piece of wisdom for those of you that need, especially those of you who are my brethren in, in the work. Maybe you're in the work of the ministry. Okay. And um, this is something that will preserve you so that you do not find, you know, get yourself into too many of these things. Uh, of course, we remember that Mashiach told us not to cast our pearls before swine. And so, one of the rules that I have learned, especially as we're walking into perilous days, is to confine discussion, which might include going back and forth, but I confine discussion to those on the same mission. Because if you're on the same mission and you're talking about, well, I think we should do this to cure the cow, or I think we should do this to cure the cow. Okay, well, let's try that first, and then we'll do the other thing, and we'll see which one works. At least you're on the same mission, right? Right. Wise master builders do not debate with the public. They don't go out in the public and say, oh, we're discussing whether or not we should put windows on this side. What do you all think? We're not going to ask you. We're going to get a thousand different opinions. Right. Okay. If you're a wise master builder, if you're a leader in this hour, you need to take counsel among those that are going in the same direction you're going, that are part of the vision that you're involved in. 
and um, where there there were so there can be no die vision right. or multiple visions in one place. And once that occurs, brethren, it's not going to be strife. That is strife. That is what strife is. Strife is multiple visions in one place. And so their vision is, and this is what you're going to hear out there, is that it doesn't matter what we do. doesn't matter how we behave. We don't have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We don't have to forsake, uh, um, assemble together as uh, not forsaking it as a matter of some of his. We don't have to obey those that have the rule over us. We don't have to assemble in, in the appropriate places. We don't even have to think about that he's building an ecclesia. All that we just have to think about because he just he just graced us. And unless you're on a stake 20, 10 feet that way, and that's where you're doing your repentance, you're not exempt from any of the other ordinances that he gives you, including water baptism. So a lot of people will use, well, the thief on the cross, he didn't do any of those things. And he met him in paradise because he was repenting finally. And that just shows the mercy of Elohim. Right. All right. Don't think that he's going to have the highest place. Right. All right. Uh, so just, just realize that if he's merciful, that's not a doctrine you preach. Go ahead and live your life terribly. And when you're crucif when you're in when you're on a cross being crucified, that's a good time to repent. Vast majority of people I know think that and live that way. And so that's the people that are pushing. This is what happened in every generation where judgment fell. I mean, we were looking at different time periods, and you do this a lot in your broadcast. You look at a lot of time periods where it's basically a repeat of the same pattern, isn't Nothing it? Nothing new under the sun. It's, it's the same old scoff at his word, act like you're entitled, pretend you're exempt, and then you don't have to worry about nothing. And these are the people that do not get delivered. Consistently do not get delivered. I mean, the pattern is there over and over and over again. Arrogance never passes for faith. The spirits aren't dead. That's why they just jump from person to person, from generation to generation. Arrogance never substitutes for faith. So people that are like, oh, I believe, but I don't care what you demons believe and tremble. You need to be obedient and humble. Okay. And that humility is what he needs to see upon you. That whole finger snapping, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, is, is exactly what Every generation, I mean, you've really studied a lot about this and talked about this on your channel. Is there any generation that took that attitude that he delivered? We don't have the sense of Nineveh. Right. Let me see if I got this. This eclipse is going over towns called Nineveh. Right. <laughs> and we don't have the sense of Nineveh. Right. Okay. One of the things that was in that word we got was sackcloth and ash. Look at Jeremiah 4 8. Yes. Okay. Jeremiah 4 8. He's telling you, you, you better realize what he's doing here. Right. Um, and so this is oh, here by the way, here's here's another one that you guys are a lot of you are arguing here. Um, you don't even realize who you're talking to. Let me put this on the screen. Hang on a second. Some of you are getting in, getting into debates, and there's a whole room of people who'll be happy to debate with you. Okay, they'll be happy to debate with you. Mm -hmm. All right, and so you know you need to be careful with all that arguing because that's an actual propaganda mill. All mm -hmm. right, and that's what they're doing. They're literally debating with people and causing trouble and causing discord on purpose, uh, with intention. And right. that is not Elohim's will. He's not trying to get us to argue with one another. We need to unite in one accord, set aside all the weight and sin that doth easily beset us so we can run a race. He says okay. to strive to live peaceably with all men. So That's right. we should be peacemakers. And if you see people who are continually wanting to live a strife and debate and chaotic life, that is not... Of you who a lot of them need deliverance from a thing called envy. Yes. So uh, they fell into some poison envy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. instead of poison ivy, it's poison mm -hmm. envy. And they're seeking significance because of a self-esteem issue or lack of self-worth. 
or desire for worldly gain, seeking money, appearance, status, achievements. So they're not really interested in any particular topic that doesn't give them some glory. Remember what he said. He said, any man who doesn't, that seeks to save his own life will only lose it. Okay. And so this is why we need to be very, very serious in this hour because he is going to deliver his people. And here's Yeremiyahu 4 8 for this gird you with sackcloth, lament and how for the fierce anger of Yahuwah is not turned back from us. Oof. Oof. Okay. And what do he say in Matthew 24 29? The sun will be darkened, the moon shall not give her light. So if there's a time to find your brethren is now, not sitting around going, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm going to whisk away. And you many know you don't want to know how many generations of people were destroyed with that same nonsense. And, th and this is why when, when we're thinking about, okay, how we move along in these next days and weeks, we can't, we also have to be thinking, how can we use what we have now to mm -hmm. also help those who, who may not have the same needs, which is why we want to do this fundraiser because it helps keep our minds off of us and realize that there are people who don't even have the unrighteous mammon to try to get set up. Exactly. And not only that, but listen, if you're trying to only save yourself, you're going to die. But if you with wisdom, with wisdom, pay attention now because this is the wise, okay, wise virgins. So, you know, what I have is not enough to meet my need. Perhaps I should ask Elohim if it's seed. Right. Okay, because you can sow it to someone else is in need. So, for example, you might be like, man, I need housing. I need to be in a place. Okay, sow to somebody else's. Yes. Be wise in this moment. Don't be thinking always about yourself. Right. This is the recipe for disaster that has caused deliverance not to for the person not to stay delivered. The devils come back seven times worse because you're seeking only your own benefit. And it, okay? we have to train ourselves that way because we weren't yes. raised that way. That's not the way of the world. And so that's right. We have to. We have Retrain. to walk it out. Even if we're, our mind isn't there, we have to do it. Put one foot in front of the other to think about how can this be preservation for someone else? That's right. Because yeah, sometimes it's just not enough to meet your need. So then it must be seed. And he provides seed for the sower. Why are you going to sow? Because his word is true. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will men give into your bosom? Because you activated the process by faith. Some of you just got a word right there. And now that word's going to have to pass through three tests. Saints, there's just no exceptions. You get a word, it's going to go through the test. You're going to get mocked for it. The enemy's going to try and snatch it. If you can't snatch it, you're going to get mocked. You're going to get embarrassed. And you should thank your haters. Okay, thank your haters. Because there's only one way to pass the test of being hated for his namesake. And that's for you to stand on his name and have him hate you. Mm -hmm. So thank you, hater, for <laughs> making sure I got another reward because right. you hated on me. Thank mm -hmm. you. Man, you flipped that around. I said that on one video and the person retracted. They downvoted the video before it even broadcast. So you know, that's a hater. Mm -hmm. How are you going to downvote a video before you even got a chance to watch it? Right. And they got busted. Right. I, I'm like, um, obviously you're a hater. Thank you for that. That right. just got me rewarded, right? right? I don't really care about that stuff, but it's obvious to me that we have those who just can't stand the victories that you're getting. And they wish ill on you. Even though they pretend with a smile, okay, yeah, they themselves need deliverance and they are disgusted by your deliverance. So understand that. Um, this is why we have things like this. And the Psalms are filled with words of deliverance, just filled with it. OK, I mean, when you're really needing to meditate on deliverance, man, just open the Psalms. Right. You're going to get blessed. And he says, I will love thee in Psalm 18, verse one. Oh, Yahuwah. Think his name doesn't matter. Six thousand eight hundred times they erased it. That's how important it is. My strength. Yahuwah is my rock 
am my fortress, my deliverer, my Elohim, my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon Yahuwah, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And those enemies are not natural. They are spiritual. We mm. wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, don't we, sister? Amen. And it's a hard word to remember because we don't see those principalities. We see the flesh and blood. That's right. We do. We see the people and we think, oh, it's you, you know, sister or brother, so and so. And we're like, oh, why are you hating on me? It's not them. There's a spirit moving through them. Through them. Right. And this is where the anger and the hatred comes in because these spirits absolutely cannot stand the name. Right. That's why they came up with sacred namer. Right. Right. Now it's Hebrew Roots cult. Man, this cult is taken off and nobody's at the lead except Yahusha. Weird cult. That's the case. Isn't a cult supposed to have like one central guy mm -hmm. that's supposed to be in charge or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, and then and they're supposed to be like above the scripture, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, this is a cult that teaches you how to read the scripture right. and right. And, right. and and think for yourself. Yeah, right. this is this is this is a little antithetical to that that mm -hmm. moniker. But the the lower minded, those who are not learned, those who don't even think about these things, they fell right for it, didn't they? And I yeah. think that's why he says, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in that day, they would only save themselves. We shared this earlier, but I'm going to put it back on the screen, guys. You might want to write this verse down, Ezekiel 14, verses 13 to 14. And look what he says right here, Noah, Daniel, and Job. Who are these? These are his all-stars. That's scary. He's like, that. this is my all-star team. Right. Okay? This is my all-star team. And if they were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith Yahuwah. So don't think that you're going to, you know, cruise right through this with no problem. This is why I believe we need to be blessing and working together. Yes. Uh, especially now um, that we see the day approaching. Now, I, I know that not everybody is in this habit. Uh, one of the things that he gave me years ago um we actually need to print more of these because we've given them all away but remember the prayer of the king and the prayer of the king is in matthew chapter 6 and it begins in verse 9 and it is the prayer that changes the world and the reason why it does is because it recenters you every single day Amen. and how often are you supposed to pray this Every day. Every single day. Hey, there's our brother, Jarrell Toma. Thank you for joining us, brother. I hope you're feeling better. We sure love you, and we wish nothing but blessing and recovery upon you mm -hmm. as you rest. And I'm looking forward to our next conversation. I'm sure it'll be a blessed one. But now um, take a look at this in Matthew chapter 6. And he says, after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Does that sound like it's optional? Anybody? Sound optional to you? Doesn't sound optional to me. Sounds like he expects us to obey. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he says, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. What? Oh. What does it say? Oh. Kadosh or hallowed be your name. Huh. How about that? Can't even get that first stanza in without dealing with the name. There it is. I mean, that is that is so right in your face. Okay. And oh. it doesn't go away. I know there's people that are dull of hearing, but it doesn't go away. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, very specifically to Yahuwah, in earth as it is in heaven. And give us our, this day our what? This daily. tells you how often you need to pray this prayer because it's daily bread you're praying for. Manna only comes once a day. Oh, and so you need your daily bread, right? And, and so this is what he is calling us to. Excuse me for a sec there. Uh, this is what he's calling us to. He's calling us to daily bread. not. Um, and, and of course, he says, forgive us our, our debts or trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Right. So what if you don't forgive anybody? 
this is another reason why you're seeing some anger out there. Is people got a problem with forgiveness, don't they? Yes. I just had a whole conversation with someone about this yesterday. And it will allow bitterness to form. And, you know, I dealt with for my entire life someone that I talked about this a little yesterday that I've had to forgive who's not sorry. Okay. This went on for decades. And I remember even before I knew you who was named, just praying, like, please help me to forgive, even though it's not what I feel right now. And also, so I don't right. get bitter. So I right. don't feel, because I, I, I think to me, it takes more energy to be bitter towards someone than just to let them go. Yep. You know? Well, I think, I think that, uh, that, that um, root of bitterness grows best in a, in a, uh, a bed of the fungus of unbelief and, and unforgiveness. Yes. Uh, if you say you believe Elohim, then you would have forgiven your brethren right away. Right. Uh, if you, if you believe Elohim's word, then you would be afraid to hold a grudge. Amen. So the very fact that you hold in a grudge and keeping that thing going or being angry or not rip, not um, forgiving a trespass, whatever that might be, right. then you're recalcitrant. Elohim doesn't want you in his kingdom. Wow. Let me go ahead and say it point blank. He don't want you in his kingdom. He's going to put you out with the dogs because you didn't learn a simple lesson to forgive your brother. You thought yourself so important that your trespass was higher than their trespasses and vice versa. And you started to separate from them rather than say, you know what? I forgive you, even though you're not sorry yet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forgive you by faith, mm -hmm. by faith right. for Give. I'm going to give it before you even say you're sorry. There it is. There okay? it is. I'm going to do it before I even feel like it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it before I hear a good reason for it. I'm going right. to get in front of this root of bitterness right. versus the person that's like, no, I'm going to make you suffer. I'm going to make you pay. I'm going to I'm going to take out vengeance on you, right? That's what unforgiveness is, unrealized vengeance. Wow, there it is. Okay, that's what unforgiveness is. It's it's vengeance that you want to take out on somebody that you haven't done yet. You haven't executed it. Wow. There it is. That's what unforgiveness is. You just waiting for your opportunity. That's right. You just like Cain with a rock in your hand waiting to meet your brother in the field. And if you catch there him behind himself because you don't have forgiveness in your heart, you're going to kill him. Wow. If you don't kill him physically, you'll kill him in other ways, right? right? In Romans, he tells us in chapter 12, if it be possible as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. That doesn't He doesn't qualify that by saying only the ones that you like. Right. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith Yahuwah. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Amen. Give him a good breakfast. Give him a good lunch. Give him a good dinner. Even if he doesn't appreciate it and it curses you behind your back, feed him. If he Amen. thirsts, give him drink, even though he doesn't appreciate it or curses you behind your back, right? And he disdains you, but he smiles at you. Hey, hell, thank you. But then as soon as you turn around, he hates you, right? For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. So if they receive it and they can come to forgiveness, great. If not, well, you did what the scripture said. Exactly. You were a blessing in a difficult it's one thing to give the people that like you. What about people that hate your guts? And there's going to be more people that hate us if we really are his and That's i mean a lot of hey, releasing of debt come on and it's unrealized vengeance it's vengeance that they wanted to take out this is why they won't get deliverance right okay when you are holding unforgiveness for any i don't care what the trespass is if you're holding on to the unforgiveness you do not receive deliverance right your deliverance will be attached, attached to forgiveness. And how right. do I know? Because the scripture says, Mashiach gives us the parable of the man that didn't forgive his brother. And what happened to him? He got put into prison to pay the full debt. Wow. So you're about to watch an entire group of people mm. who, because they refuse to walk in forgiveness, refuse to walk in the, in the Kadosh ways of Elohim, 
they will now pay their full debt, emaciated, starving, wishing for death. Wow. Because they would not let go of a grudge, which is essentially saying I'm better than that person. And, you know, and so therefore I'm not going to apologize or I'm not going to re let their repentance be received or, or forgive their trespass or whatever it might be. And right. I want to say anybody that's offended with either my sister or myself, please forgive us. Amen. Please forgive that trespass. Please forgive whatever sin that you believe we've done. Right. Even if we don't quite know what it is, just forgive for your sake. Right. Walk in shalom. Because if you attempt to do that vengeful thing, well, he that move, rolleth away that stone to hurt his brother, that stone will roll back. Oh, man. Him. This is heavy, man. It's true. This is why deliverance doesn't stay. Right. Because people get offended. What is your enemy going to keep doing? Trying to get you offended. That's what Messiah told you was going to happen. Yes. In Mark 4, he said, your enemy will cause offenses, persecutions, tribulation, so that you will give up the deliverance and hold right. on to the offense. Right. And that's giving you gave up your deliverance for an offense? Right. For an offense? Right. That was more valuable to you? Go, I'm going to get that guy. That was more important to you wow. than the kingdom? Well, enjoy that. And that's the crown. That's the deliverance. That's the crown. You just lost your crown. You just wow. lost your crown. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in Luke chapter four, what did Mashiach come to do? The, the concept of deliverance is interwoven into the gospel. This is why when I started seeing so much relapse, so many people going back to the same thing, sister, right. this is what made we made us dig we weren't content with just saying oh we're going to double down on what we learned back in the 90s no we learn things after right we keep learning i learn new things every day yes every day peter james john apostles anointed knocked down anointed their shadow heals people guess what learning things every day right never think you apprehend it OK, so even the highest gifts in the in the kingdom have to keep learning. Right. Who, who are you? Right. Everybody. Right. In Luke four and 18, he, I'll put this on the screen. He says, the Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, sent me to heal those whose hearts don't work right. Mm -hmm. That's what broken means. It doesn't work it doesn't mean sad and lonely it means your heart should work a certain way and it's broken right and he wants to fix the broken heart so the heart works properly to preach deliverance to the captives why is it preach deliverance why isn't it just you know force freedom no because you got to believe elohim right. and come into your deliverance right there's going to be things you have to do, all right? And recovery of sight to the blind. Why? So that you can finally see what's keeping you bound. And yeah. you can rebuke it and walk out. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. So his word is progressing through you until finally you are walking in freedom. Amen. And then it becomes the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Why? Because you better get on the right path with the right time. Right. You have an acceptable year before Yahuwah. How long did it take for him to assess a tree not bearing fruit? One year. Right. How many times have you heard me say, I don't think anybody's my friend until I see them after a whole year? That's true, because you look at the fruit of that tree for one year. And That's right. It. So some people might think, oh, my goodness, you mean I got to be your friend for a year before you finally decide I'm your friend? Yes. Short answer, yes. I need to see you in all four seasons. You don't want to know how many people promised their undying love in the spring and were gone by summer. Yes. How many have you experienced already? Many. In your, in your short walk, you've already Very seen short them. walk. Yes, okay. many. So these are all evil works. These yes. are those that come up and spring up quickly, but then they can't they endure. They flame out. 
Okay, this is why we need to glean wisdom one from another so we don't flame out, right? Okay. And the and the swine will get you burnt out. Right. This is why you have to stop arguing and debating and refresh with your brethren because when you do, you have more endurance, don't you? Right, and I think so for some people, you know, maybe it, they need to be off of social media. Yes. You know, we got off in uh, the spring of 20 or right before the spring of 2021. And what an amazing time to receive revelation of who he is and his ways. And I think that that is part yep. of the psyop keeping some people bound is they are still plugged into that metaverse, the, the matrix. That's right. Hey, that's a great point, brother. I I, uh, I knew that well, because when you endured that, you, you put up with me for a year. I knew you actually liked me. I'm like, wow, he might actually be my brother. But until I see that, unfortunately, I've been on this on this earth long enough to know that you need to let people show you who they are mm -hmm. and show you their commitment. And, the, and the, the people that are genuine, they don't mind because they're not going anywhere. Right. So they they're like yeah well I'll be your friend in a year and I'll be your friend in five years I'll be your they friend won't even year. notice that you're doing that yeah. they're, just, they're just being themselves yeah they're yeah. just being themselves but those that are with agenda see one thing I know very well about the demonic is they are in haste yes they run up they are in haste and so haste is is a telltale sign they want to quickly develop a relationship that can only be done over time yes. They want to compensate because they're feeling themselves outside. They're feeling a lack of, of cover or safety or whatever. Wow. And social media, if you follow me on either our pages, any of our pages or on my uh, social media, you'll see the content that I continuously put out there is all ministry. Right. It is it, this, this whole social thing that people are doing where they're just thinking it's all fun and in games. Uh, you don't even realize where you are. It's a very dangerous place to be out there, isn't it, sister? Darpa, it's DARPA's um, tracking software. Okay. And and so we need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves in this time. Now, when we talk about him delivering us, does that automatically mean everything is going to go wonderful? No, not at all. Ask Joseph, ask David, ask, I mean, we can go on and on. Yesterday's Shabbat message, we talked about that. Uh, you're going to be hated, right? You're going to go through difficulty. Right. So expecting somebody saying, oh, I know it was Elohim because everything went smooth. And you're just like. What test has ever gone smoothly? <laughs> Where do I sign up for that? No, I don't want to. <laughs> what? It what? went smoothly? Oh, that would make me actually suspicious, right? Yeah, 52 Sabbaths, that's right. Get through that. Then you can tell me when I see you faithfully as, you know, Mashiach trained as apostles where to sit and where to watch the people, right? Because if you are a slave of mammon, for example, mm -hmm. then you're going to do things that are mammon oriented that are, that are um, compromises, you're going to do things for mammon. You can only love one or the other. So it is not a very wise steward who doesn't pay attention to that. Right. It is not a very wise fivefold officer in his kingdom who is not paying attention. When he taught you to sit in a certain place to watch so you would understand when the Ananias and the Sapphiras are trying to make a beeline for the inside. And they're cheating and cutting corners. What does that say they will do when they get inside? Same thing. Exactly. But when they're faithful, and there's no end in sight to that faithfulness, that's a different group. That's right. one of the things that separates the few from the many. The multitude that will perish. That's the problem yes. given to Ezra. Deliverance from the power of mammon is the deliverance. Yes. Mammon gives you the ability to exercise power without love. Right. So if you don't have dominion over it, you will be taken over by a loveless evil. Wow. Or as he says, iniquity will abound and the love of many will wax cold. See. Because you didn't choose Yahuwah Elohim, you chose something else. Right. 
So this is the base of deliverance. If you cannot at least choose him, what good can I be to you when you have still your eyes need to be opened? Right. How many people don't even see that they have yet to repent of their thefts, like he said? Most, because they think that that scripture is for the heathen. Yes. Oh, that say that again, sister. They they that think was that, that scripture is for the heathen. They don't realize wow. that that admonition was for the believer. You know, I did this meme yesterday, but my goodness, did you just nail that and knock it out the park? And he says in Revelation 9 and verse 21, neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication. So these are all spiritual things, killing reputations, attacking their brethren, and even to the point of murder, sorceries. Come on, saints. Mm -hmm. What are we seeing out there with media, period, is sorcery. Mm -hmm. And fornication is mixing what's meant to only be in covenant. Mm -hmm. And nor of their thefts. See this? They won't repent of thievery or being a thief. Is Yahuwah mocked? Shall those who so sparingly reap in abundance? This is a question he asked me. So that's why I put it on this meme because he spoke this to me as I was, you know, sort of lamenting certain people, because you know how we pray for people that we want to see delivered, but mm -hmm. Elohim's like not responding the way you want him to. Right. Like you're like, Father, please deliver this person. And he's not delivering them. And you're right. like, why not? Why aren't you yeah. delivering them? And he says, yeah. shall those who sow sparingly reap in abundance? Wow. Mm. Be not deceived. Yahuwah Elohim is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is an Old Testament. This is in the Brit Hadashah. This is so terrifying. So he's saying, no, no, no. If they serve mammon, I gave them a choice, and they decided to serve mammon. Let mammon save them. Let their mammon save them. They thought they were given a choice to preserve their brother or preserve themselves. They decided to preserve themselves. Then save yourself. Then save mm -hmm. yourself. They gave they were given a choice laid before them life and death, and he said, Choose life that thou and thy seed may live. No, they decided they were going to be like Achan and violate his ways. Okay, well, deliver yourself out of this fire that's coming for you and these rocks that are coming for you. Mm. Deliver yourself. Okay, when you pray, your prayer is not going any higher than the ceiling. Deliver yourself, right? And then you go, Oh, no, 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 Yahuwah is my deliverer. Oh, Yahuwah is your deliverer. Oh, Yahuwah, really? Well, you need to repent. What for? Thefts, fornication, mixing things that he didn't tell you to mix. He didn't tell you to worship him in the way of the heathen. Mm. Come on. Okay? What you walking up a three-step altar for? Who told you to do that? Yeah, you got wow. tricked. You're getting tricked. And you're like, well, no, it's good enough. No, it's not good enough. Right. That's why he said the narrow road. Peter was shaking when he started to get the revelation of. It. He's like, "Who can be? Well, saved? who's going to be saved? Yeah, no, it yes. hit him. It hit him. Like, this is not. This is not a joke. This is I'm literally sorry. how I'm feeling. Yeah, oh, am I making like, it in? Are we making it in? Like, literally, the questions. Yes. Fearful and trembling. Oh, now we're coming in. Now you're coming in. Now you're coming in, you're crossing over, you're recognizing. That's why Mary was on her face with yes, tears, it is. wiping his feet with her hair. Now you're getting it. Yes. Now you're understanding. What did he say um, uh, uh, about Sodom and Gomorrah? That they would, what, repent how? In sackcloth and ashes. Right. If the same miracles were being done. Mm. Okay. And we got in, even right here in this chat, we got people that they're close. They're close to you like the foolish versions were next to the wise version. Mm -hmm. And they presume the, the oil of the wise is for them. Well, I'm exempt. No, even the widow with mites was not exempt. Wow. Weren't they praying too in Sodom and Gomorrah? Wasn't that in, was it in Jasher chapter 19? They, they thought they were good. The judgment fell and they thought, you know. They we'll were good. Pray. Now, Grace. Yeah. Okay. 
Ooh, and, Lizzie, and, and I'm like tearing up. This is so real and heavy. Like this is no joke. Look what my look what my sister Patricia said. Who told you to put an Asherah pole on your altar? Right? Oh no, you didn't. Okay, and they did, and they do mm. it, and they oh, you know, bring your offerings to the altar. Mm. And that, and people don't even put two and two this together. Is the other hill. These people were literally bringing their offerings. This to the is why their deliverance didn't stick. Right. They went home worse than they started. And you're like, how can hill. that be? They, I'm, with Eliyahu. I'm, they were on the wrong hill. False prophets of Ashtaroth and Baal. Because they're cheaper and easier. It's, Elohim I, you know, asks you hard questions. We just had okay? this conversation. The road, the convenience is, or the conventional is always easier. So you can either choose the path of least resistance or the conventional, right? What's the yeah. newest? What's the easiest? Those are both. Nicodemus, true. Nicodemus had to come and ask, how can, you know, what, what do I do? And he says, oh, you need to be born again. Yeah. How can a man go back into his mother's womb? You need to be born of the Ruach. What Ruach? The Ruach that writes my Torah in your heart and mind. Okay, that's the Ruach you need to be part of. Mm. Shalom, Brother David in New Zealand. That's the Ruach that needs to come in. Mm. Is the Ruach of his emet. So that you know why the dragon is fighting against um, the, uh, uh, the remnant. Who man. keep his commandments and have the testimony of Yahusha yeah. HaMashiach. Not the imposter, right. not the switcheroo. That they <laughs> they need did. both. They need yes. the, is it in Isaiah that says that they have to have both? I'm going to answer your question in a moment, Branch Vine. Go they ahead. They need the testimony of Yahusha and the commandments because there's people who have the commandments, but they got this fake name. Yep. There's people who have the name, but they refuse to do the commandments because we're not in God's special land or whatever they say. Like, what? Right. Without recognizing where he's already placed his name. Right. And he put it within your reach. Right. And does that matter? No, they don't care. Mm. But now, but now we can witness that. See? Mm. If I stand next to the altar, don't I get to see a lot? Right. I do. I get to see. I can just stand here. Just like any Levite, mm -hmm. any minister, any of his fivefold through centuries. Just sit here and watch. OK, like he taught us to. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, somebody asked me about the eclipse. What's mm -hmm. my opinion? Uh, and I believe that we are moving into a very dark period. I right. believe the judgment of Elohim is coming. As I said, if you go over to remnanthouse.org and get into our discussion board, um, you're going to see a prophetic word. Or um, he led me through each one of the four, eight verses to interpret what's coming. It's not good except for the remnant and the set apart. And right through all that, he speaks to us about how we're to conduct ourselves. Um, we're neither going to hide ourselves in the dens of the rocks, or are we going to be amazed by the signs in the heavens? The signs in the heavens are not for us. It's a wicked and, and uh, adulterous generation that seeketh exactly. after signs. signs. Yes, We don't need the signs. The sign we that we're looking look for is... It. Is increased obedience, is increased increased um, reverence. But if there's a reaction you're looking for, sackcloth would be good. If you're looking for something to do during this time, intercession for those that are looking up or hiding themselves, that's a good thing to react. So right. if you're looking for what can I do during this time, sackcloth would be good. I'm not yeah. playing. I'm serious. Yeah, okay. Sackcloth. And this is a good day to pray for your families and your relatives because this is the sixth day of the seven day feast. It, this is the day that he puts the yes. fire behind the people of Yasharel yes. to separate them from the Egyptians. Right. What would have happened if they stood there looking? Keep okay? going. And then he says, to the, he says to them, you keep going. Yes. What are you doing standing here? You tell the people go forward. Yes. Don't look. All right? Don't look back at what they're going through. So my counsel, all right, coming up to this, is don't be discouraged, don't be in fear. 
because that is for those not repenting and not obeying. Since you're here listening to this broadcast and you're you're inclined to do Elohim's will, repent, seek him. Say, is there a violation that mm. I'm committing and have not repented for? I don't want you to say of me they didn't repent. So I'm going to double check the double check of the double check and go, are we sure that there's nothing that I have not done yet? And then when you're done with that, I mean, looking at your own eyes and removing logs from your own eye, then you'll be able to see clearly the specks in your brother's eyes. Get that sackcloth on. Get to praying. I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I'm going to be praying for my brethren. I'm going to be believing Elohim to deliver them. All right. And we have a countdown on our website because I believe this happens like around noon our time, you know, just shortly after noon from mm -hmm. what I've been told. So we're going to be in intercession, saints. We're going to be praying for people who need to be delivered. As far as the physical eclipse is concerned, I, you already know it's not healthy to look at that um, because of what it can do to your eyesight. But I believe that it may be a prophetic thing as well. So when he was passing over, he put the children of Yasserel indoors, but not underground. Right. Okay. So underground is in error and outside is in error. Right. Once again, underground is in error and outside is in error. Right. So what would my counsel be? Be indoors in prayer, maybe sackcloth and ashes, right? And be interceding. OK, and be praying for those who are still in harm's way, whose eyes have not opened. And may maybe this will wake them up. Maybe what happens after, as we as you said, it's like the gate is opening for this time period from now to Sukkot, which. Whoo, it looks dicey. And okay. all the events are renting hotel rooms, driving up. Things are selling out. I mean, I remember the last eclipse. I was in my world list in 2017, and I was working yes. at a law firm, and we all went outside and looked at it. No, oh, so look at this. The and world is looking at it, and yep. all the heathens are looking at it. That's a telltale sign right there. I mean, do you I want to be doing whatever? <laughs> right. right. Okay. You want to do what he puts in your heart to do. And don't go under, don't go underground. Some of you might not come back out if you go underground. They're going to trick some people. Mm. into that underground and then you will never see them again mm. okay don't be running underground that's one thing number two um you know being outside when his judgments are coming when things are happening no. listen you think there's going to be any shortage of video you no. think there's going to be any shortage of pictures no. you won't miss a thing be in prayer you can always catch up later with all the natural parts of it be in prayer cry out to elohim this is a good day to pray for your brothers and sisters, your family, your relatives. Some of you have relatives that are scoffers and mockers mm -hmm. and haters. Okay, pray for them. Pray that Elohim reaches them. Pray that they get zapped. It isn't going to be easy. No. Okay, some we're going to have to give over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that their soul be saved. Mm. We're seeing that, man. It's rough. Okay, that's yeah. something we forgot about. Give such a one over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that their soul might be saved. Yes. And so those that are looking for something to do, join us in intercession. Bring this, it. my house shall be. Barukata. <laughs> my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why all 12 flags fly here. We have our obligation. Our brethren are on our heart. And there many of them are still scattered in the nations and don't even know who they are. Let us intercede for them. Yes. Let us lay our lives down for them. This is my counsel to you all. And do not give heart, give your heart over to fear or, or to, you know, do not fear the natural man and for all the things that they're warning you and they're going to do this and do that. Instead, fear him who is able to cast both body and soul into hell. Let the trembling begin. Let your hands begin to tremble as you pray. Let the trembling come into your ruach as you begin to realize the, the gravity of the moment. Let the trembling come into you as you pray for those whom you love, whom Elohim has put on your heart for a long time. May this be the day of their deliverance. 
Amen. And so we have to do what we can. But you are called to be a living sacrifice. So this is my counsel for all those that are wondering, what should I do? Don't follow the heathen. Don't be dismayed at the signs of the heaven. Don't worship Don't the be hosts dismayed. of heaven. Jeremiah Don't 18 worship the hosts. comes to mind. And that's what you're not did. even sure what you're looking at. They don't you're not even sure what you're looking at. You, they told you one thing. They lie. Right. The end. Because how they tell people how eclipses happen isn't even accurate. They lie. The end. Right. It's a sigil. I believe that it's a very, very ominous thing. And uh, like I said, I've given you my counsel. So not something to be taken lightly, not something to be. Uh, you shouldn't be living in, in fear either. But um, but as far as our, our families and those that um, Elohim uh, uh, has set apart, we need to pray for them. And the last passage I want to share with you before we let you go is Ezekiel, since you mentioned Ezekiel, uh, the great prophet who saw amazing things for the last days. And he says in Ezekiel 36 and verse 23, for this was the prayer of Mashiach in John 17. Mm -hmm. And he says, I will sanctify my great name. Whew. How, he says he will be sanctified within his people. So again, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. He says this in the book of Revelation. And heathen shall know, and the heathen shall know, and the heathen the shall heathen know, know yes. that I am Yahuwah, saith yes. Yahuwah Elohim, when I shall be sanctified in you, you. Mm. before their Amen. eyes. And so this is my counsel to you. Be sanctified in his name, just as your daily prayer is in his name, right? And he tells us, these things so that we would understand the hour that we're in. Some of you seeing 111, you seeing ones all the time. Well, mm -hmm. from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the yes. Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name. Yes. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, mm -hmm. saith Yahuwah Sabaot. They're about to find out. They're gonna know his name. Out. They're They're gonna know his name. There's a reason why his name is flying. There's a reason why he is set apart a place where his name abides. This is not a light matter and a light sign. Those of you that are aware of it are among the few and chosen who even know it exists. Most people don't even know that this is even in North American soil. They, they don't even know what this says. They, if they see this, they don't even know what this is. They can't read. I saw somebody was doing a video and they spelled Yahusha, but then they they read it wrong because they didn't even know the letters that they were reading. It wow. literally said Yahusha and they couldn't read it. So they added a Shua. Mm. They added vanity, which is exactly what he says they would do. Vanity, yes. Okay. They corrupt because it's, it's corruption in their mouth. They, they're living in corruption. Right. And because they're living in corruption, how do I know? Because I sat by the altar and I wait. I didn't see him. That one, he was going to say, did you see him? No, I didn't see him. They never showed up, never showed up. Never walked by, never participated, never helped. Only concerned about themselves, trying to make a name for themselves, trying to be big shots. The king is coming. Get ready. The king. Not a king. The, the king. king. You can He's not it. running for king. He doesn't need your vote. He is king. He doesn't need permission either. Amen. Amen. He just is. And that's why we have to be wise in this moment. Just like my brother Davi just said. That's right. Wise as serpents, but gentle as, as doves. We cannot hurt anyone. We're not out to argue. We don't argue people in. What we're flying a flag for is almost like, it's almost like the guy at the airport. Right? He's not trying to pick up everybody. He's, He's looking name. for the person looking for the name. Come. Perfect. 
There it is. If you know, if you see the sign and it's got your name on it or it's a name you recognize, there. you're like, hey, that's me. There. That's me. I'm with you, right? Maybe yeah. he's got maybe he's the shuttle to the hotel and he's got double tree hotel on it, right? And he and he puts it up, right? And and you go, Oh, that's where hey, we're with we're we're going there. Okay, you are you're with us. Stand over here. I'm looking mm -hmm. for anybody else going where we're going. Who wants to go to the tree of life? Tree of life, anybody, tree of life. Yahuwah, see Yahuwah. If you don't even know what those letters mean, then this, you're going to walk right by that sign. Right. But those that recognize it, those are the ones he's signaling. Okay. He's signaling you. Right. And he's saying over here, over here, over here. Why? Because yeah. this is your safe place. Yes. You're going to be okay here. Yes. Over there is going to be judgment. Wow. Amen. Any last words, sister, before we let him go? <laughs> You've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good time. It, I think that as we close out the Feast of Unleavened Bread, just know that, you know, I, I was just talking to somebody about this today. I used to struggle with the fear of the unknown. I used to struggle with unpredictability and, um, you know, things that I wasn't expecting, the unexpected. And, and that's still an area in my life that's being refined. But just know that we are in perilous times of the unknown. None yes. of us living has ever been through any of this before. That's right. I talk to people of all ages, especially those who are my elder, and everybody reports the same thing. They've never seen we anything. We've never seen like nothing this. like this. So the only one we need to fear is Yahuwah, uh, with a reverential fear, but just know that we're all seeing this. We're all watching this unfold. None of us has all of the answers, but you know, there's only one that has every answer, and that's, that's right. Yahuwah Elohim. Seek him while he may be found. Amen. Cry out to him while you have opportunity. Thank you, my sister, for Thank joining so us tonight. Much. It's such a blessing always to have you join us. Isn't she wonderful? Don't we love her? I'm so grateful for you. And let your light continue to shine as you do what Elohim has called you to do. Thank Amen. You. And those of you that are uh, still straggling out there, maybe you haven't found a, a place that you can um, connect and we encourage you to find that fold. And if you haven't, well, maybe you're watching this broadcast because he's inviting you into this house. It's about to rain. Don't you need some shelter? That's our encouragement to you. Find the place Elohim has called you to be where you can lay your life down for your brethren. If you seek to save your own life, you're only going to lose it. Well, that's our broadcast for tonight. I pray this message has been a blessing to you. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember, Yahusha HaMashiach, he alone is King of Kings.